So here is our question related to this module. We need to make a text style in AutoCAD with name my text and ensure that simplex.shx font is selected for making this text style. Also keep the height and rest of the settings at the default and write a simple text using single line as well as multi line text. So I'll start with the text style and for that I'll go to this annotation panel, expand it and here we have the text option. So you can click on this text option or you can also go to this flyout and select manage text styles. Now here we have annotative as well as a standard but we need to add our own text style. So I'll click on new and give it name. So the name should be my text and click on OK. So my text is now selected. We need to change this font to simplex. So let's type S here and we have this simplex shape font simplex.shx that's selected. Now I'll keep rest of the settings unchanged. Click on apply and click on close. Now we need to make the text. So I'll go to this annotation panel and select multi line text. Make a box and let's type our text. So I'll type AutoCAD 2018. And now in this case, you need to ensure that my text is selected. So you can see here, my text is the default text and it's using the simplex font as you can see here also. Now simply click on close text editor and there we have it. So we have this multi-line text using the default text style. Now let's move back here. And in this case, I'll select single line text. Now click at a point and specify any height. So I'll simply press enter to accept the default height and press enter again to accept the default rotation angle. Now let's type the text. So it should be AutoCAD 2018 and press enter twice. So once again, we have the text with the default text style because we have set this my text here in this drop down. So it will take the properties of this text style. And here we have the single line text as per our requirement. So now let's have a look at the blocks tool of AutoCAD and blocks are simple named objects which can be used as a single 2D or 3D entity and they are used to represent some repetitive geometries in the drawing. For example, in this case, we have this door symbol and all of these door symbols are made with blocks. Also, we have this bed which is a block and it has been used a couple of times in this drawing. So all of these geometries are made using blocks instead of copying them in different places because we get some advantages with block. When you use block instead of copying the geometries multiple times, you have the advantage of keeping a tab on the block properties. Now in this case, if you modify any single instance of this block, all of these blocks will be modified. For example, in this case, if you modify this door, the complete door set will be modified in this drawing. Similarly, if you modify a single instance of this block, all of their instances in the drawing will be modified. So that's the advantage of using a block instead of copying the objects. Now making a block is quite simple and to explain it, I'll go to this drawing. Now here we have a simple geometry which is made with line, circle and arcs. Now in order to convert this into a block, you can use the command equivalent of create block which is B or you can select this create block tool from the block panel of home tab. So I'll click here and now this block definition window will pop up. Now first you need to specify the name of the block. So I'll name it as sync and now select the pick point. So in this case I'll click on this pick point and now I'll click on this top point but in this case I'm not able to see any object snap marker. So I'll go to the status bar and select this object snap option. Alternatively, you can also select the object snap by pressing F3 key. Now click on this point and here we have the coordinates of that point. They are added here. Now click on select objects and select all of these objects and press enter. Now you can see that we have 19 objects selected and all of them are in our selection set for the block. Now we have these three radio buttons. So for the first case, I'll simply select this convert to block option. And also I'll keep 
annotative and scale uniformly unchecked. We'll look into these options in a moment and I'll keep this allow exploding option checked. Now with these settings, click on OK. And here we have this block. Now when I move my cursor to this object, you'll see this block reference on the tooltip. That simply indicates that this object is now converted into a block. It's no longer a set of geometries. And when I click on it, you'll see that the complete geometry will be selected with a single grip, which is at the base point. Also, when you go to this block panel, you'll see this small arrow right under this insert option. When you click on it, you'll see a replica of the block. Here we have the sync block and now it is added to our current drawing 11.1.dwg file. It has been added there. And this is simply a copy or a reference of this original block. So if you want to insert it, simply click on it and insert it. Now both of these are references of the original block which is stored here. So now let's press Ctrl Z a couple of time to get back to the original drawing. And here we have it. Now it's no longer a block. Now once again, I'll convert it into a block with slightly different properties. So I'll go to this create block and I'll give it a name. So I'll name it as sync once again. Now select the pick point, which is the same pick point on the top side here and select objects and I'll select all of these objects. Now in this case, I'll select a different radio button. In the previous case, we have selected this one convert to block. Now in this case, I'll select retain and I'll keep rest of the options unchanged and I'll click on OK. Now in this case, when you move your cursor to this object, you'll notice that it's still a simple object. It has not been converted into a block, but we have a copy of that object here. We have the block added in our drawing, although the drawing on the screen has not been converted. That's because we selected the retain option while creating the block and that's why the object on the screen has been retained into its original form. It has not been converted, but a copy of that has been added as a block here. Similarly, when you select the delete option while creating the block, the object on your screen will be deleted, but a copy of that object will be added as a block. So I'll close this block definition and now I'll press Ctrl Z a couple of time to get back to the original drawing. Now let's have a look at some of the options which are available in the create block window. And for that, I'll once again create the block. So go to this create block and I'll give it a name. So again, sync pick point, which is the same pick point. And I'll select delete option and I'll select all of these objects and press enter. Now here we have some options like annotative scale uniformly and allow exploding. So when you click on this annotative option, the block will become annotative and we'll learn more about annotative behavior in the upcoming modules. For now, I'll keep it unchecked. And here we have an option of scale uniformly. So when you click on this option, you will be able to insert the block in a drawing with uniform scale in X, Y and Z direction. So when this checkbox is selected, you won't be able to change the scale in different directions. All of the directions will have same scale. Also, we have an option of allow exploding. So when you select this option, you will have an option of converting this block into a simple geometry by exploding it. So I'll keep this checked, but I'll keep it unchecked. The scale uniformly, I'll uncheck it. Also, we have an option of block unit, which is set to mm. And in most of the cases, it will be same as the unit inside your drawing template. So I recommend you to keep its unit unchanged and keep it same as the drawing template unit to avoid confusion. And now click on OK. So since we have selected the delete option, the block has been deleted from the drawing area, but we have a reference here. The original block has been added and you can insert its reference. Inserting a block is pretty straightforward. So you can click on this insert option and you can insert a block from this preview panel. But there are also some options which you can use while inserting the block. So I'll select this block and now I'll insert it. In this case, we have the simple block. Now I'll click on this insert. I'll select the block, but I'll not click anywhere. Instead, I'll right click. Now we have some options here like rotate. Now you can rotate this block. So simply you need to specify the rotation angle. Now click here in the drawing area and specify the second point. So that will indicate the rotation angle, which is 90 in this case. And now you can click on the base point to insert the block. 
Similarly, if you want to rotate it to 180 degrees, once again, you can click on this sync, right click, select rotate. Now click on this point and click on this point and we have it rotated to an angle of 180 degrees. You can not only rotate the block while inserting, but you can also change the scale. So I'll select both of these block references and I'll erase them. Now once again, I'll select sync, right click and select scale. And in this case, you can change the scale. So right now, let's increase its size to twice of its original value. So I'll type 2 and press enter. Now we have this block which is twice the original size. Now let's insert one more reference of this block. So I'll select sync and I'll right click. And in this case, you'll notice that we have an option of X, Y and Z. So using these options, we can change the scale of this block in different directions in X, Y and Z axis. And we can change them in different directions because while creating the block, we have unchecked the option of uniform scaling. So now we can change it in different axis. So I'll select this X axis and now I'll type the X factor of 1.5. So in this case, the block will be stretched to 1.5 times of its original value only in X direction and the Y direction will remain same just like this. So when you compare it with the original block, you'll notice that the length has been stretched to 1.5 times, but the width is retained. In this case, if you don't want this behavior, if you want the block to stretch uniformly in all of the directions, then while making the block, make sure that scale uniformly is always checked. So now I'll cancel it and I'll remove all of these instances of the block. So you can insert these blocks using these methods, but also there is one more way of inserting the block and that's using the insert window. So click on this insert button and now go to this more options. And now you'll have more options of inserting the block. In this case, we have the insertion point which we'll specify on screen. So I'll keep it checked. Now we have an option of scale. So obviously we have this option of changing scale in X, Y and Z direction separately. So you can select your scale if you want. Also you can specify any angle directly here. So you can specify an angle of let's say 45 degrees. If you want to insert the block directly by rotating it to an angle of 45 degrees. And if you want to explode the block after inserting, you can check this box. Now let's click on OK and let's click anywhere to insert the block. Now the block has been inserted at an angle of 45 and also when you hover your cursor, you'll notice that it's no longer a block because it has already been exploded. And when you explode a block, it returns back to the original form from which it was created. So we have created it using polylines, lines and these circles and arcs. So it is returned back to that form. So I'll once again go to this insert, I'll select more options and I'll make sure that all the overrides are unchecked. So I'll uncheck this explode and I'll select the uniform scale for all of these axes. Also the angle should be zero. Click on OK. Now we have the normal block here and it has been added with the default values. So this was all about creating and inserting blocks in our AutoCAD drawing. In the previous video, we made this simple sync block and here we have this reference of the original sync block. Now in this video, we'll learn about modifying this block and you can modify this block in the block editor environment. To access the block editor environment, you can double click on the block reference and that will take you to edit block definition window. From this window, select the block which you want to modify. In this case, we only have this sync block. If you will have lots of blocks here, you can select any other block also from the list and now click on OK. And this will take you to this block editor window, which has this gray background and also this block editor tab. For now, I'll simply close this block editor. Now there is also an alternate method of accessing the block editor environment and you can do that simply by selecting the block reference and then right click and by selecting this block editor option. So here we have this block editor once again. So in this case, let's assume that we want to modify this block and to modify this, I'll go to home tab and I'll select the rectangle and I'll add one rectangle here. Now, once again, go to this block editor 
and now select this save block. You can also simply click on this close block editor and if the block is not saved, the save option will pop up. And here we have it, the changed block. And when you click on this insert option, you'll notice that the original block has also been changed. So you can insert a new reference and it will also be changed. If you want to modify this block even further, you can select it once again, go to the block editor. And now I'll remove this one. And I'll simply click on close block editor and I'll save the changes. And here we have it. All the instances of the block are now updated and also we have it updated here in the drawing. Now if you want you can also redefine the block completely. So by redefining a block you can essentially add a new block and give it the same shape of this block. So to make this clear I will explode this current block. So I'll select it type X and press enter. Now this has been reduced into simple objects as you can see here but still we have this object as a block so I'll place it somewhere over here and now I'll change this block completely. So I'll select this complete object here and I'll deselect these circles so for that I'll press and hold shift key and now I'll make a window. So this will deselect the selection from here and now erase it. Now I'll go to ellipse and I'll click at the center here and now I'll add an ellipse here instead of a rectangle. And here we have it, a different kind of sink is added. Now if you want to redefine this block also and if you want to make it look like this object, you can do that simply by creating a new block. So once again, I'll go to this create block and now I'll give it the same name which is already existing and I'll name it as sync. So sync is the name of this original block, but I will use the same name for this new block as well. Now I'll select this pick point and click on this point. Now click on select objects and select all of these objects, press enter. Now leave all the options at their default and click on OK. Now, as soon as you click on OK, you'll see this block redefine pop up and here you'll see these two options either redefine or don't redefine. Obviously, we do want to redefine it. So select redefine block and here we have it. The original instance of the block has been redefined and when you go to the insert window, although the preview has not changed, when you click on it, the redefined block will be added here. So in this way, you can modify and redefine your blocks in AutoCAD. In this video, I will tell you about right block and global block tools. So in this case, we have this simple drawing and all of these components are made with simple geometries and none of them are block. As you can see here, we don't have any block here in this insert window also. Now, if you want to select any of these objects and if you want to make a separate drawing from that selected objects of this drawing, you can do that using the right block tool. To make this clear, I'll go to this insert tab and now here in the block definition panel, click on this create block and select this right block option. Now you'll see this right block window. Now here you need to select the objects that you want to write. In this case, I'll select this objects option. Now select the pick point and click at a point. In this case, I will write this insulator and I'll convert it into a simple geometry or a simple drawing. So I'll select this point as the base point. Now click on select objects and now select the objects which you want to write in a separate file. So in this case, we only want to write this complete set of objects. So I'll select it carefully. Okay, and here we have this selection set. Now this part of the geometry will be converted into a separate drawing. Now press enter. And now we have 83 objects selected. Now we specify the destination. In this case, I'll select desktop as the destination. So I'll go to desktop and I'll give it a name. So I'll name it as insulator and now click on save. And click on OK and the drawing has been saved as a separate file. So let's check it. So I'll minimize this drawing and here we have this insulator drawing. So let's double click on this and you'll notice that only that part of the drawing has been written as a new insulator drawing. So that is 
write block feature and in this case this object is simple geometry it is not converted into a block so let's now close this insulator drawing and i'll also close this demo drawing which i have used now i'll open a completely new drawing and let's go to home tab and in this case you will notice that we don't have any object we don't have any block here now in this case if you insert any external drawing it will be inserted as a block so we will insert it so in this case i'll go to this insert tab once again and now i'll select this insert option so now this will open the common insert window which we have already seen but in this case we don't have any block here as you can see here but we have an option of browsing the drawing so click on this browse option and now locate the drawing which we have saved so i have saved this insulator so let's select it click on open and with the default values click on ok and now you'll notice that we have this drawing here and the cursor is on the base point which we have selected while writing this drawing so click here and now it has been inserted as a block in this case this is the base point which we have selected while writing this block and the name of block will be the name of drawing file in this case the name of drawing file was insulator so we have inserted this complete drawing which is a global block and that global block is inserted in our drawing so when i go to this insert option you'll see that we now have an insulator block and when i click on this again we have this instance or this reference of the original insulator block and we can insert it now so in this way we can write certain part of the drawing as an external file and we can also insert a complete drawing as global block in our current drawings in this video i will tell you about the inheritance property of blocks so here we have this drawing in which we have two different blocks now both of these blocks will behave in a very different way when they are put on different layers so i'll first switch my layer to layer 2 and now i'll insert both of these blocks one by one so let's go to this blocks fly out and let's select this chair the first one and here we have it so in this case the block has been inserted on layer 2 which has red color but still the color of this block is unchanged and it's taking the initial color of its objects let's go to the insert again and this time i'll select this desk chair and now we have this chair and in this case although the original block was made on layer 0 but it is taking the properties of layer 2 or the layer on which it is inserted so what's going on here to test this and to find out the reason i'll go to the block editor so let's select the first block then right click and go to block editor now here we have our block which is currently in green color and when you go to the home tab and when you select the complete set of objects you'll notice that they are on layer one now whenever any object is made on layer other than layer zero then its layer assignment will not change when it is converted to a block that is what is happening here with this block so currently all of these objects are on layer one and now this object has been converted into a block so the original layer one properties will be retained everywhere when the block is inserted so now i will simply go to block editor and i'll close it now let's check this block so i'll go to this block and i'll select block editor here in this case when you select the complete set of objects you will notice that it's on layer 0 and now this layer 0 has a special significance now any object which is made on layer 0 will take the properties of the target layer when the blocks are made so by using these objects which are on layer 0 we are making a block and when this block is inserted on any other layer it's taking the property of that layer so that's the difference between layer 0 and the remaining layers so we can conclude that whenever an object is made on layer 0 and it is converted into a block the block will take properties of its final layer or it will take the property of layer in which it has been placed but if an object of layer other than layer 0 
is converted into a block and then it is put on any other layer it will never take the properties of its target layer and it will always retain the properties of its initial layer on which it was made so that is what happening here now let's close this block editor now in both the cases we will change some of the properties which are related to this block and we'll see its effect so once again i'll select the block and i'll go to block editor now i'll select this block completely and let's go to home tab and simply change its layer assignment so i'll change its layer to layer 0 and as you can see that the layer 0 has white color and i'll close the block editor and i'll save the changes now let's look at the block here now the block is taking the property of its target layer because we have assigned layer 0 to this object also when you notice this one the initial block it's also taking the properties of its target layer which is layer 0 now let's go to block editor and I'll return all of these objects back to layer 1 and let's close this block editor now what if we try to change individual properties of these blocks so I'll select this block the block which was not made on layer 0 and I'll go to this properties and I'll change its property to yellow and its color is still green now I'll select it once again and I'll change some other color maybe this time it will change but no there is no change now even though when you select this block you'll notice that the color of its layer is red and we have assigned an additional property of blue color still it's taking its initial color which was green now let's repeat the process with this block in which we have made this object on layer 0 now here you can clearly see that the layer color is red which it has and also the property is by layer that's why it is taking the properties of its layer now let's override this and let's change its properties to blue and let's see what's happening so here again even when we are changing the properties we are overriding it still there is no change in both of these objects if you try to do it with this object you'll see the same effect so no matter how you change the properties of these objects they will always take the property of their layers but you can change that as well to change it you need to change their properties so I'll first select both of them and from the property I'll select by layer also in this case let's select by layer now let's select this block right click and go to block editor and in this case once again I'll select the complete set of blocks go to home tab and now I'll change a simple property I'll not change anything in the layers panel I'll go to this properties panel and from here instead of by layer I'll change the property to by block now the block will take the property which are assigned to it and it will not take the properties of the layer so let's close the block editor and I'll repeat the process for the second block also so I'll go to block editor and here also I'll select the complete block go to home tab go to properties and change it to by block so once again in this case also it will always override the properties of its layer so currently in both of these cases they are taking the property of their layer now let's change the property of this first block from the property panel now I'll change its color to blue and here we have it the color of this block now changed so even when this object or this block is on layer 2 a new color has been assigned which is blue now I'll repeat the process for the second one also here also we know that its properties are by block so whatever the property is assigned to the block will be taken up like this so in this case also the object is on layer 2 which has red color still it's taking the property of color which we have assigned so if you change its properties to by block the block will always take properties which we override or which we assign and it will always take priority over the properties of the layer so this may be a little bit confusing to you in the beginning but with practice you will get really good at this inheritance and you'll be able to identify the difference between these properties and these overrides so that was all about the inheritance in blocks 
In this video, I will tell you about groups and using groups, you can categorize different kind of objects in separate classes. For example, here we have this floor plan on which we have many different objects. For example, the bed, the objects in the kitchen, the objects in the washroom and also many other objects. Now, if you want to classify them on different categories, then you can use groups. So groups are available on the groups panel of home tab and here it is and in order to make a group you need to select this big group icon you can also use its command equivalent which is group so let's click on this and now select the objects which you want to convert into a single group but before doing that i will name this group so look at the command line and we have an option of name and description so i'll select name and i'll give this group a name so let's name it as bed and now press enter. We'll leave this description and now select all the beds in this drawing. And now press enter. So now all of these beds are included in a single group. Let's repeat this process once again. So I'll go to groups and this time I'll name it as kitchen. Now press enter and select all the objects of this kitchen. And we have all of these objects included in another group now we have made these groups using fixed name but you can create unnamed groups also so let's create one so I'll go to groups and now I'll not select any name and I'll simply select the objects so for this case I'll select this piano this dining table set and this tree and now press enter and now we have an unnamed group with these three objects now if you move your cursor on any of the objects of the group, for example, if you move your cursor to this dining table set, you'll notice that the complete group will be selected. And if you move your cursor to any of the objects in this group, the complete bed will be selected. Similarly, if you click here, the complete items of the kitchen will be selected. So in this way, you can classify them in different categories and that will make selection quite easier. If you want to remove all of the objects from the group, then you can simply select this ungroup option. So select this ungroup and click on any one of the objects. In this case, I'll click on this bed and now we have it as simple objects. We no longer have a group. In order to convert it into a group again, I'll select group. I'll go to name and let's name it as bed. Press enter and now let's select these two beds. I'll leave this one for now and now press enter. So we have this group with these two beds. Now let's say that we do want to include this bed also. For that, you can select group edit option here. So click on group edit and now click on any one object of the group which you want to edit. Now you'll see plenty of options on the command line like add objects, remove objects and rename. Select add objects and select the object which you want to add. Now we have these three objects and now press enter. So we have this object here. In a similar way, you can remove or rename objects in this group as well. For some reasons, if you want to temporarily hide the selection of groups, even after making them, you can do that by this group selection option. So if you turn it off, the objects will be selected individually, even when they are part of a group. In this case, you know that these three beds are part of a group but still we can select them separately but if you turn it on now they will be selected as a single group and whenever you select a group there will be a bounding box this bounding box which will be visible and you can toggle the visibility of that bounding box on and off by clicking this group bounding box so now we do have a selection of group but we don't have the bounding box so i'll keep it checked so that was all about creating and modifying groups in autocad In this video, I will tell you about the group manager tool of AutoCAD. So we have some groups here in this drawing, which we have made in the previous video and we'll modify the properties of those groups using the group manager. So to access group manager, expand the groups panel and select this group manager tool. Now you'll see all of these groups in this list. And here we have these three named groups and also we have this unnamed group which is indicated as star A1. So in your case, you might not find this unnamed group and if this unnamed group is not visible, simply click on this checkbox 
and the unnamed group will become visible. Now let's start with renaming of these groups and I'll rename this first group which is unnamed and I'll rename it to living room. So I'll simply type here live room. Now you'll notice that I'm not using space in the group name because space is not acceptable as a group name. So always ensure that you enter the name without spaces. Now once the name is entered click on this rename button and we have this live room group added. Now if you want to create a new group directly from this group manager you can do that as well and for that select this new option but before selecting the new option give it a name so I'll name it as door and now click on new. So in this case I'll select all of these doors which are present in this drawing and we'll create group from these doors. So this is the selection now press enter and we have this door group added in our list. Now in this case when you look to this column you'll see that all of these groups are selectable that's because we have selected the same option while creating the groups. Now let's make some of these non-selectable. So I'll select the bed group and I'll turn off this feature. So for that click on this selectable button and now you'll notice that the selectable option has been changed to no. Now click on OK and now select any one of the bed and you'll notice that only that bed will be selected even when this group selection is on. So the group selection is on but still we are able to select all of these objects of a group individually because the feature of selecting all of these objects of a group has been turned off from the group manager. But still in this case if you select any object from some other group the complete group object will be selected. So once again I'll go to group manager and I'll select it and I'll make it selectable once again by clicking this box. In order to remove any of these groups from your list you can simply explode them. So here we have the explode option let's say that we don't want this live room or the living room group so select it and select this explode and we don't have that group anymore here. So in a similar way you can add or remove objects also and that's quite simple let's say we want to add some objects in this kitchen group so select that and select this add option and add any one of the objects. So we have these three objects already selected. Let's select these two lines and press enter and we have both of the objects selected in our group. Similarly you can remove them or you can obviously rename them and add a description. So with these changes let's click on OK. So that was all about group and group manager tool of AutoCAD. Okay, so let's have a look at the practice question of this module. Now we need to convert this geometry into a simple block with any name and you need to use the lower left corner of this geometry as the base point. Now after making this into a block, insert one of its instances or references in the drawing area and then modify this and include a circle of radius 2 unit at the intersection point of vertical and horizontal line which is at the center of this geometry. Now the length of this rectangle is 10 unit and the height is 16 unit. So here we have this geometry and you can make this geometry using simple line, polyline, rectangle and different kind of tools. Once this geometry is made, go to this create block option and now give this a name. So I'll name it as test block. And now click on pick point and select this lower left corner as the pick point. Now make sure convert to block is selected and click on select objects and select all of these objects. Now make sure allow exploding is checked and also open in block editor is unchecked and click on OK. So there we have it. We have this block here. Now let's insert an instance of this block. For that I'll go to insert, click on test block and I'll insert it. Okay so now we need to modify this and in order to modify this simply select it then right click and select block editor. And here we need to enter a circle at this point. So I'll go to home, go to circle, click on this intersection point and make a circle with radius 2 unit. 
and press enter. Now there we have it. Let's close the block editor and save the changes. And there we have the final geometry as per our practice question. So now in this module, we'll start looking at the attribute tool and attributes can be used to add dynamic information in our AutoCAD blocks. So I will explain it with the help of window block, which I will use in this drawing. And in this case, we have these two window drawings and they are simply made with lines and they are not yet a block and we'll create some attribute information and then we'll convert it into a block and then we'll insert it in the drawing. So to add the attributes, go to this block panel and select this define attributes tool. So either you can select this tool from the expanded block panel or you can also use its command equivalent ATT. So you can simply type ATT on the command line and press enter to access this attribute definition window. Now in this window, we need to define the properties of the attribute and I'll start with the tag. So the tag will be the identifier which will be used instead of the actual attribute information and it will always be in uppercase even if you add it in lowercase it will be converted into an uppercase value. So I'll type dim as tag and dim for dimensions of the window. In the prompt we need to enter the prompt which we want to see on the insert attribute window. So I'll select enter window size. And now here in the default field, you need to enter the default value which you want to see in case no attribute value has been added. So I'll keep this value as A cross B. So that will be the default value for this case. Now here we have some text related settings. The first one is justification. So I'll select this middle center text justification and we'll see it in a moment how this middle center justification is used. And also we have the text style which is a standard. If you have more styles, it will show up in this list and you can select from that. Also, we don't want it to be annotative, so I'll keep it unchecked and the height of text. So you can apply a height. In this case, the height is set to six inches. And here this double inverted comma sign indicates that it's an inch symbol. And also, if you don't want to add this text height in the text value, you can add it dynamically by clicking on this box and you can specify the height. For example, you can click on this box and click at two distinct points in the drawing area and that length will be used here. So obviously we don't want this, we'll simply add six inches as the text height. Now we have the rotation angle, which I'll keep at zero. I'll not change this value. And now let's look at this mode option. So here make sure that lock position is checked. And when you keep this lock position checked, the attribute value will remain fixed with respect to the block. Also, we have this preset value, which should be unchecked because if you keep this value checked, the default value will be used directly and it will not prompt for any value. And also make sure specify on screen is checked. So with these settings, click on OK. And now specify the place where you want to put this. So I'll just go to the midpoint of this line and I'll turn on this object snap, go to midpoint, but don't click. Now move it a little bit upwards and click somewhere over here. Now, as soon as I clicked, you'll notice that the complete text will move to align its center point at the point where I clicked. So that's because of middle center justification. So in simple terms, the point which I clicked will be the middle center point of the complete text. Now we have created this attribute definition. We can add one more over here or we can simply copy this one at this place. So I'll do this thing. I'll copy it select the copy tool, select the attribute and now copy it to this place here. Now press escape and here we have it. Now the attributes are added, but in order to identify these different attributes, I'll simply double click on the second one and this edit attribute definition window will pop up. From here, I'll just change the value of this attribute and I'll change its tag name to dim one. And you can also see that you can change the value of prompt and also the default values. So you can obviously change these fields if required. Now with these changes, click on OK. And here we have this dim one attribute. 